Welcome back and here's another daily code problem. So today we're doing one called 132 pattern. And so with this one, what we have here is an array called nums. And so all that we want to do is return true or false if it meets this pattern. And so what is this pattern? Well, I like to think about it like kind of a mountain range where you start at a smaller number like one and then goes all the way up and stretches up to a larger number like three and then kind of falls between that range like a number like two. And so one important thing to realize here is it, it kind of, this final number, right? It does fall between these two numbers, but also it doesn't, it can't equal these numbers. And so it's kind of non-inclusive here. And so say if you have something like three, it can't also be three because that would be like a mountain range like that. All right, and so how do we go about doing this? Well, I think one important thing to catch here is that they don't all have to be like one after each other or contiguous they can kind of skip over numbers. And so what I mean by that is something like negative one, uh, two followed by zero works. And so you're allowed to kind of skip over a number like three uh, and use numbers that come later on, okay? And so that's kind of the main challenge here is that we can't have like this fixed size window of size three that we kind of move those pointers along to solve this. You have to think about like every possible combination while maintaining that order of, okay, well, this one has to come before the three, and then the two has to come after that three as well. All right, so how do we go about solving this? So I think the main key thing here for these type of problems and just leak code in general, but especially this one, is you really gotta think about this problem from every angle, roll through your mind every possible pattern or technique you've used in the past, and just think about like, okay, does sliding window work? Uh, not really because I have to think about every combination. Uh, okay, maybe think about something more like backtracking and brute forcing it. Is there a way that you think you've done a similar problem that you can kind of tweak and tune that algorithm uh, to solving something like this? And so for me, the, the most intuitive um, approach for this is to iterate backwards. And that's a very common thing in Lee code is don't think about just iterating forward or having two pointers and going inwards. Think about also going backwards or just any possible direction. And so with this, the main challenge with this mountain range for me was figuring out what is the third number here? What is the number that falls between uh, this range? And so it kind of reminds me of like next greatest or all these stack problems where you're kind of maintaining um, like the the largest number that you've seen so far. And so with this, how you can kind of apply that logic is you always want to have the third number to be kind of like the largest third number possible. And so that will then allow you to easily find a number that is less than uh, that third number. And so what you can do here is if you iterate backwards, always be looking at what the current number is and then what is the kind of maximum third number that you could have for this kind of particular number? And we can kind of consider that moving forward. So then when we're saying, okay, can we find something that fits at the bottom of that range? Well, yes, it's pretty easy to do that because we found like the maximum third number possible. So just to better illustrate that, we'll go ahead and I'll show you an example we're going to use that stack and we'll run through it and then we'll implement it programmatically. So we have a stack here and we have something like uh, one, uh, three, uh, four, followed by uh, two here. And so with this, what we were going to do is once again, iterate backwards. And so what's going to be on our stack is all the possible third numbers, third numbers. And so with this, those are all the possible third numbers, but then also we want to have, okay, um, what is the maximum third number so far? So maximum third number. And so initially that's just going to be infinity because we haven't found one yet. And so we're just going to uh, roll through this and I'll explain as we go what the algorithm is. So the first thing that we do is we wanna to add to as a possible third number and, but we can't include it as a maximum third number yet because we haven't found a case where there's a number that comes before it that's greater than it. So it kind of meets that kind of three, two criteria of that mountain range that I was talking about where this is three and then two. 
And so this two, we haven't found a number that comes before it, right, after this or before this two, that's bigger than that. But we're about to now because now we're looking at four. We're considering four now. And four is actually greater than two. So we're going to take this off the stack and now update this. So it's the new maximum third number. And so we're going to place four on the stack. And we're going to continue on and say, okay, what about three? Well, three isn't actually uh, greater than four, and so it doesn't really meet that criteria, so we'll add it to our stack as well, okay? But now when we hit the number one, and we're looking at one now, we see that, okay, the number one is actually less than our maximum third number, which meets this criteria of one is less than two, but then we know that since two is our maximum third number, that means that because that instance variable or that variable has been updated, we found another number that's in between one and two that uh, is a possible kind of second number there, which is what's on the stack. So either of what's on the stack, three or four, would work as the middle number here or the peak of our mountain range. And so then we can return true. All right, so I think that's enough explanation. Let's go ahead and look at the code, and often I find this way more intuitive. And so we're going to return false at the end of this if we find no possible pattern here. But let's go ahead and see if there is one. And so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to define our stack here, and we're also going to say that our maximum uh, third number here is initially negative infinity. And let's go ahead, just for simplicity, is call our stack um, possible third numbers. I find that the most intuitive for me, third nums. And so once again, we're just going to iterate through for every number, uh, but in reverse order, like so. And so from here, we can just say, okay, well, with each iteration, naturally we want to add the number to our stack. And then also, what is our base case here? Well, we're gonna return true if our current number is less than that possible third number here, right? And so that's going to be saying that we found a, the first number in our sequence that's less than the final number, and that kind of meets that mountain range criteria. But okay, so how do we kind of maintain that stack logic, which is really the heart of this problem? And it's a simple two lines of code, but it can be hard to come up with. And so what we can say is, okay, while we have something on our stack and what's at the top of our stack is actually, let me think here, uh, less than, less than, yeah, the current number, then we've proved a place where, okay, uh, we're, we found, we found a new maximum third number. And so this is saying that, okay, the number that's at the top of our stack we can pop that off and set it as our new maximum third number because we found a number that comes before it uh, that is actually greater than what's at the top of our stack. And so then that meets that, okay, there's a number that meets the middle criteria and then this would meet our third criteria. And so if we hit this base case, then that would meet the first criteria. All right, so we just say, okay, our maximum uh, third number here is then equal to stack.pop. All right, so let's go and try running this. So it looks like we got an error. Stack is not defined, right, because I was calling this maximum third numbers just for um, trying to make it more intuitive for you or help with readability. And uh, not accepted, so if possible third numbers, is less than the current number. So let me think here, list, what's the list? While, oh, let's go ahead and just print N. I think I'm iterating through this, right? So if I print N, those are numbers. So then while possible third numbers, possible third numbers dot pop, dot append the 
And what's the list? Because I'm clearly indexing within this list. So if I print possible third nums, oh, I see here. With each iteration, I should be pending the number and not the array nums. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, that's fine. Anyway, sorry about that mix up. So at the end here, naturally with each iteration, you want to pen the number, but I was just, I just was going quick and I called it nums. But yeah, so this runs in O of N uh, time complexity because with each iteration, or we kind of want to iterate through a number. So we have to go through the entire length of the string in worst case or the array in worst case. Um, and then for space complexity, well, uh, naturally we are using a stack in this case and in the worst case, we would kind of add everything to our stack if it's always, I think, um, in decreasing order or maybe increasing order. Uh, depends on how, which way you're iterating through it. Um, but yeah, O of N time and O of N space complexity. So yeah, hope this helped a little bit. Once again, try to go through in your mind like every possible uh, pattern or kind of uh, uh, data structure or approach you've ever used before. Think about iterating through it forwards, backwards, uh, from inwards out, outwards in, like all possible uh, ways. And eventually you might be able to find a solution that kind of works for you. All right. So yeah, hope that helped a little bit and good luck with the rest of your algorithms. Thanks for watching.